Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the GPD WinMax Mini Gaming Laptop, which is a small notebook computer with an 8-inch display, a Core i5 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and it's going up for pre-order through a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo set to begin on May 18th, 2020 for $779 and up. After the campaign ends, it's going to sell for a little bit more than that, and it'll ship uh, this summer. So this is a demo unit, a pre-production demo unit that was sent to me by GPD for testing purposes. And I've been using it for about two weeks at this point. And there's a lot to like about this little computer. It's uh, at 780, I mean, it's not the most affordable device that you could get if you're just looking for a little laptop or if you're just looking for a gaming machine, but there's really nothing else quite like it on the market right now. So if you want something that can play full PC games, well, a Nintendo Switch isn't gonna do it. And if you're looking for something that you can play games on that's thin and light and easy to carry around, uh, some of the smaller laptops don't have the horsepower that this one does, and most laptops don't have the built-in game controllers that this does. So it's not necessarily for everybody, but for a certain niche of people, I think it's a really pretty interesting option. Uh, now first, let's put it into a little bit of context. This is a device that uh, has a long history. GPD has put out a couple of win computers before. Earlier models were smaller and a little bit closer to being pocket-sized with five and six inch displays. They didn't have full-size keyboards like this. They also weren't nearly as powerful. GPD has also put out a couple of little laptop devices, the GPD Pocket series, which really are closer to being pocketable, but they don't have the game controllers again and they're not nearly as powerful as this. Uh, if we want to put it into even sort of a further bit of context, it's sort of the evolution of the netbook. So the one netbook that I still have in my home is this EPC 1000H with a 10-inch screen, which at the time was about as small a laptop as you were going to find with a 10-inch screen. Now we've got this 8-inch model that you can see is substantially smaller, has a uh, higher resolution screen, 1280 by 800 versus 1024 by 600, and weighs a lot less at 1.8 pounds versus 3.2 pounds. Now, again, that makes it, ooh, I don't know, twice as heavy as a Nintendo Switch. So it's not necessarily gonna be the best option for everybody who's looking for a handheld gaming machine, but it's a full-fledged Windows computer. Now, there are other full-fledged Windows computers. Um, I don't happen to have a GPT Pocket or a OneMix Yoga handy, but here's a Picago, which is similar in size. Uh, much, much less powerful with an Intel Atom processor. And again, this is actually something you can fold up and fit into your pocket, something that you're not going to be able to do with this 8-inch monstrosity. Um, so it's small by laptop standards, but it is fairly large by mini laptop standards. And then finally, I'm just going to show it next to this HP Spectre X360 13-inch convertible. So you can see that the GPD system is actually much thicker, even though it has a much smaller display. Now the HP laptop that I'm showing you here is just you know, an example of an Ultrabook. It's a machine with a 13.3 inch display, an Intel Core i5 processor, and it's actually the less powerful of these two notebooks. This has an eighth generation Intel Cabby Lake quad-core processor with Intel UHD graphics, and this has a 10th generation Intel Core i5 1035G7 processor, also a quad core chip, but this time we have Iris Plus graphics and it scores much better, uh, not only in CPU benchmarks, but very, very much better in graphics benchmarks, uh, scoring as much as twice as high as that HP laptop I just showed you. So you can find more details about actual benchmark performance at lilliputing.com. If you want to know how it handles as a gaming machine, I've posted a bunch of videos on the YouTube channel. You can check those out as well. But now let's just do a quick overview of what this can and cannot do. And I'll also uh, tell you a couple of quirks that have come up because of the fact that this is a pre-production demo unit. I hope some of those quirks will be worked out in the, uh, the final version. So um, one thing that I should point out here is that this is actually running an unactivated version of Windows 10. The version that ships to customers should have a fully activated Windows license. Uh, I've also had a couple of uh, crashes or other weird sort of issues uh, that I'm hoping get worked out, but uh, I can't necessarily make any guarantees. And that's why I would call this a preview rather than a review, because this is not a retail unit. Uh, 
So let's take a look at the hardware. As I mentioned, it's got a Core i5 processor, a 1280 by 800 pixel display, also has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of PCIe NVMe solid state storage. That storage can be upgraded, the RAM can't, um, but 16 gigs is really plenty for most of what you would probably wanna do with a device like this. It's got this QWERTY keyboard, which is pretty good given the size, but there's some interesting uh, choices that GPD made. I go into these in more detail in another video, but I will just point out that the placement of some of the punctuation keys is a little awkward. Placement of caps lock is weird. <laughs> tab, uh, tab above the Q is really not where my finger expects it to be. And then these half-sized number keys and function keys can be a little bit awkward as well. Uh, they're also aligned a little bit funny because of that tab placement. So the one and the F2 are lined up and the two and the F3 so it takes some getting used to, and even once you are used to it, because these are so close to each other, if you're touch typing and you reach up, it can be hard to make sure that you're hitting four instead of F5. Uh, the keyboard is backlit, although it can be a little bit sort of hard to make out the illumination in a brighter environment. You can sort of see some light shining below the keys, hopefully in there. Uh, you can head over to lilliputing.com for pictures of what that looks like in person um, or in a dimmer room. But uh, my bigger issue with the keyboard is probably the blue function lettering can sort of wash out at certain angles under certain conditions. So you kind of have to memorize that F1 is mute, F2 is volume down, F3 is volume up, and so forth, um, so that you can adjust your screen brightness, which I should probably do because it's getting kind of bright in this room right now. Uh, in terms of general usage and performance, uh, it handles pretty nicely. This is what it looks like. Oop. It looks like when I am touch typing on the GPD Win Max Mini Laptop, as long as I don't oop, need to find the apostrophe or quotation. Um, there are a couple of different ways that you can do input. You can use the touchscreen, as you just saw me do, I think. You can, let's uh, fire up. It's not a tablet, but you can sort of push the screen back 180, or yeah, 180 degrees, but not 360. Um, and if you're using it on your lap, I think reaching up to touch the screen is actually pretty easy. Or if you're using it on a table the way that I am right now. You can also use this touchpad, which is above the keyboard, and it supports multi-touch gestures. So I can click, right-click, click, press and hold and select. Or you can use the buttons as a sort of mouse. So I can left click, right click, left click, right click by using the shoulder keys. So there are a couple of different ways that you can do that. And depending on how you're holding the device, uh, you can sort of decide what's the easiest. Now there's this switch on the side, which toggles these guys. So um, you can decide if you're gonna use them as game controller inputs or mouse controller input. On the back, we've got the shoulder buttons. We've got USB Type-C and Thunderbolt 3 ports, so you can plug in an external graphics stock if you wanted something more powerful than Iris Plus graphics. Full-size USB Type-A ports, HDMI 2.0 with 4K video output support. Micro SD card reader, Ethernet. It also supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. Uh, at one point when I wanted to copy a bunch of large files from a network attached storage device, I did plug in an Ethernet cable and it went about twice as fast as it would have over Wi-Fi. So it's nice to have sort of all those different options. It's also got a headphone jack and a microphone, but no webcam. So the headphone jack, by placing it here, it's kind of interesting because I think the most comfortable way to hold this when you're playing games is so that the bottom is maybe on your lap or on a table and you can sort of grip the back this way because it's 1.8 pounds. You're probably not going to hold it like this very often with your hands elevated, but rather like this. And then you've got your headphone is just sort of going to jut into your lap. Uh, so it's nice to have that though, especially because the speakers aren't super loud and because the fan can be pretty loud. You've probably heard it whirring a few times here. Uh, in order to keep the system running comfortably, that fan kicks into high gear pretty regularly. Speaking of the fan, 
That's where the ventilation on the back is, so the air blows out. Here's the intakes on the bottom. It's actually two fans, and if you took this off, which you can do by removing all of these screws, and I'll have some photos that you can find at lilliputing.com, or you can check out Lilliputing News at Twitter, um, you can see that there is a M2 card for storage, which you can remove and replace if you wanted to swap that out for something else but you cannot easily replace anything else on the inside, really. So if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, I mean, I think 62 gigs is pretty good, but, uh, I mean, sorry, 16 gigs is pretty good, but uh, upgrades are not necessarily going to be something you can do. Uh, in terms of battery, uh, you can also theoretically take that out, but I'm not sure that you'd be able to put a larger battery in. Battery life is interesting. It's kind of hard to say what you're going to get because it all depends on how you use this computer, but... I ran a couple of different tests, and when I was just streaming YouTube video, 1080p video over YouTube for uh, as long as I could, it ran for about 10 hours before the battery gave out. So, and that's just using the default settings, uh, the way everything was set up out of the box. If you're playing games, you're obviously going to uh, require a little bit more energy than that. So, um, I think two to four hours, depending on the games that you're playing, is probably more realistic. Some games are really demanding, and you might uh, struggle to even hit two hours. But if you're playing more casual games, I think maybe four hours is okay. If you're doing web browsing and video and sort of light internet use and uh, other general purpose computing, I think maybe five or six hours. So it's going to vary depending on how you use it, but it's a portable computer that gets pretty decent battery life. Now again, since it's not a pocket-sized device, uh, if you're just looking for a general purpose computer, you might really be better off with something with a larger screen and a larger full-size keyboard if you're really just looking for something for productivity. I think where this really excels, though, is the idea of having a handheld gaming PC that you could theoretically use for other things. Could use as your only computer, really, because you can connect it to an external display, external keyboard, use it as a desktop, and it's powerful enough to do that. Now, another thing that I really should point out here is that it's clocked at, or it's uh, configured to run at 25 watts out of the box. Intel set it up as uh, a processor that runs at 15 watts, but can be configured up to 25, and GPD ships it at 25. You can go into the settings, and I have another video that shows how to do that, and in the UEFI settings, you can adjust that to run at 15 watts or 12 watts if you want longer battery life at the cost of performance. So there's a lot of different options, a lot of different ways that you can sort of configure this uh, to be used. If you uh, are curious, here is the charger that comes with it. It's a 65 watt, relatively compact USB type C charger, but it works with third party chargers as well. In fact, most of the time I've been using it, I've been using it with a charger, uh, either one that comes with the uh, HP Spectre that you just saw or the charger for a Dell XPS 13 laptop, which I recently reviewed because the chargers work pretty much interchangeably. Uh, those are actually 45 watt chargers, but it still charges relatively quickly. Theoretically, you should also be able to run it off of a USB power bank as long as it supports USB, USB PD uh, or USB power delivery. I haven't had any success with the one power bank I have that does do that, so it might be a little bit hit or miss, but theoretically that's a possibility. Um, this is pre-production hardware, and I should point out that it has occasionally had some issues for me. So for instance, I've noticed that sometimes when I close the lid, I can hear the fan continue spinning indefinitely. Uh, so it fails to go to sleep properly. Sometimes even when I open it up and uh, manually type in you know, or tell it to go to sleep, it doesn't work. Sometimes when I tell it to shut down, it restarts instead of shutting down. So I've had a couple of sleep issues related to, uh, to this one. Also, something that I hadn't noticed until today, and I've been using it for about two weeks, is that uh, occasionally uh, I'll be rebooting the computer and it'll be stuck running at no faster than 400 uh, megahertz. And the only way to get out of that is to reboot, maybe go into the uh, setup utility, the UEFI settings, and adjust a couple of things until I can get it back to running at uh, up to 3 gigahertz or whatever the usual thing is that it can hit. Now that's something that I know uh, the Fox, another uh, person on YouTube who has been testing GPD WinMax, he had that problem early on, and uh, his assistance helped me sort of figure out what to do in those uh, situations. So right now it's running at 3.6 gigahertz. So, you know, it is pre-production hardware. I'm hopeful that those issues will be resolved by the time it ships to backers, but I would be remiss if I didn't point out some of those issues. So uh, that's it. Overall, I think it's a pretty great uh, value for the money for a particular sort of person who's looking for a handheld gaming laptop that can be used for a bunch of other things. Things. 
You can find more details on gaming performance and keyboard input and all that at Lilliputing or at uh, Lilliputing's YouTube channel. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the GPD Win Max.